What's the worst mistake you've seen someone do in their job? Not sure if this counts, but during my first internship at a chemical plant I was given the task of reading through safety violation reports and sorting them. This turned out to be way more interesting than I initially expected as the reports were riddled with accounts of sheer stupidity in the workplace. Here are a few of the most memorable incidents. A woman accidentally glued her own eye shut after trying to reattach a fake nail with industrial strength heavy duty super glue and then subsequently rubbing her eye. Someone somehow accidentally mixed an acidic compound from an unmarked bottle into their beverage and drank it. Not as much stupid as it is fascinating, a man working atop some scaffolding forgot to attach his safety harness and fell from 20 feet onto his back. The report stated that he stood up, somehow okay after falling from that high, and came back to work the next day good as new. I had a girl that worked for me that one day had a guy try to pay with a $100 bill. We all knew that we did not take any bill over a $20 but she didn't listen sometimes. This time she took the bill and when she was cashing out her draw the smart safe didn't take the $100 bill. I asked if she checked it and she of course said yes. I looked at the bill and noticed it said movie prop on the bill. She somehow missed it. Taught preschool for 8 years before the pandemic. It's protocol to count the children before moving from one room to another to make sure no one gets left behind. Had a coworker on her phone didn't count kids, and had left behind a child in the toy closet. Kid was two years old and trapped, screaming and crying in a dark toy closet for 20 minutes before a teacher passing by the empty classroom hurt her. My coworker didn't even get a slap on the wrist and management never told parents. This same coworker forced her class of two-year-olds to get dressed themselves for outside play in the winter so one time a little girl ended up playing outside in the Minnesota snow without boots on for 10 minutes before my coworker noticed. Before retiring, I was a branch manager for my state's DMV. Suddenly, one of the other managers is off sick for a few days. Then it became a week. Two weeks. Then, the auditors completed their investigation, and she was gone. Turns out she was accepting bribes from aspiring truck drivers so they would pass the written test. She was taking in an additional $100 to $250 a week. The dumb part? The pay was decent, and the benefits were fantastic. So she gave up decent pay, fantastic benefits, and a really nice retirement for extra spending money. Then there was the assistant manager who would pocket anywhere from $750 to $1,500 a week. So a better payoff. But she was removing it from the day's cash receipts. She had only ever worked for the DMV, working her was up from clerk. She had no idea that there are accounting systems within accounting systems. The bank would send over deposit discrepancy reports which she would blithely pitch, not realizing that the same exact report was also sent to our central office. The wheels of state government turn slowly, so she was able to do this for over a year, but once those wheels start, they do not stop. She ended up going to prison, and ordered to pay over $30,000 in restitution. The full manager also got fired because the investigation revealed that he was rarely in the office, and left everything up to the assistant manager. I worked for a startup cider manufacturer in my second year of college. Normally after a day of production we have to sanitize all the metal components in hot caustic wash. There are hundreds of pieces, so it takes a while. Anyways, our managers left us an hour before our shift ended to clean up. I had to go do some e-commerce end of day stuff before leaving so my coworker wrapped up the cleanup. On Monday we returned to the warehouse burned down. Apparently he left the caustic heater on all weekend and it caused a chemical fire. Everything was destroyed and it ended up bankrupting the company. He dropped out of his co-op degree after, he wouldn't be able to get recommended for another placement. There was a company in rural New York in the late 1960s that took scrap metal, melted it down in big coal-fired crucibles and made home decor pieces, doorstops that looked like little dogs, bookends, that kind of thing. Not a huge profit margin but their materials were cheap and they had a steady market. An industrial consultant convinced them to transition to electric furnaces, significant upfront expense, but much lower ongoing operating costs. The consultant even designed the new electric crucibles for the company. The company president had been thinking of expanding operations, so asked the industrial consultant to double the size of the electric crucible designs. The consultant did so, but made a mistake with the cube square law in designing the supports for the crucibles. The first time the double-sized, but about four times as heavy, Crucibles were filled with scrap and fired up they collapsed, flooding the factory floor with molten pot metal and chunks of wrecked equipment. The company went straight to bankruptcy. I'm a car mechanic. Had a colleague once, who had a pretty small job on an engine, about an hour or two and cost like $50. Made a mistake, quite big, 
but also quite common and easy to make, it's the well shit category, not something to drag him through the mud for. Started fixing it, made an even bigger mistake. At this point we even had to outsource some issues we couldn't fix in-house, we were looking for about 2 weeks and $500, on us of course, not the customer, but it was still okay. We got everything back, he started putting the engine back together. All done, first run, whoopsie another big problem, whole engine apart. Broke something again, outsourced, expensive. Overall it was about a month long procedure, hitting $1000. Once it was done, he got fired. He got away with a lot, but at one point it was way too much. One time a member of my dev team was given a task to cancel a few credit cards, less than 10, directly in the database. They cancelled 17 million, the mistake was only caught when the company helpline started to receive millions of calls the next day from all over the country with people asking why their cards were not working. Work in a brewery. One morning a brewer went to run a clean in place on a 60 barrel vessel. After the vessels are empty they usually are under some significant pressure, usually anywhere from 5 to 15 psi. Guy did not degas the fermenter before taking the sample port off. These vessels had two ports on them and we put a 1.5 inch cap on one port and a perlic sample faucet on the other. He starts with the stainless steel cap. All of the pressure came out like a bullet. I could hear from the other side of a rather large facility. Dude got lucky and the cap barely missed his head. He did get a bunch of yeast and hop residue in his eyes as his safety glasses were on top of his head and not covering his eyes. I drove him to the hospital and he's okay. Just got fired a couple weeks later. Told a newbie to clean the steel panels on the deep fryers, expecting them to wipe them down with a cloth. They instead grabbed a jug of water and decided to rinse it, with water going into the still hot oil. Yanked them back so fast I nearly gave them whiplash. And an answer from dad, a colleague dismantled a machine to fix it without first checking the pipes were cleared. The pipes were full of melted sugar, very hot. He got horrific burns that made the skin slough off his hands. Dealing blackjack. Two of our highest VIP members. Guy has a $20,000 bet. Gets aces, goes to split. Now it's $40,000. First card he gets a 9 for 20. When I went back to pull the next card for his other ace, the card was halfway stuck, so I ended up pulling the card behind the first card, which was his original card that he was supposed to get, and of course, it was a face card to give him 21. Now, I just stop. Listen, if this was a 5 to $25 bet, I would have just kept going but when it's high limit, it's a guarantee thing that surveillance is watching my table. Also, we, dealers, can be responsible for these mistakes, as in the casino can take me to court and try to prove I was colluding with a patron. So I just stop, call over the supervisor and ask him to get the pit boss over because this kid barely has any skin in the game and I need someone higher up. So my boss comes over, and I whisper the situation. His eyes lit up like a Christmas tree and couldn't believe what had happened. He then calls surveillance and they confirm that I had indeed pulled the wrong card. So now, the player gets the original card, which was like a 4 or 5, I get his face card, and I make 21. At the end of the day, I got a nice clap on the back for staying on my game, but I got this massive $0 tip from the two guys who are the most awesome people to deal to, and I respect that 100%, it was my fault. At the end of the day, the hand played out exactly as it should have, However me making 21 and taking away his face card really killed the night. Management. They knew more than 6 months in advance that the workload on the whole department would triple. We already were kinda pushing the limits, we barely had enough people for even the current workload. They failed to hire any new staff to handle that vastly ramped up workload. And didn't warn us. At all. Suddenly, work was hell. Customer upon customer flooded in with work, and these were internal, meaning part of the same company, customers. So when they got mad, they could look us up in the company email system and find out our managers and scream at them to get us fired. Which they did fairly often. They also screamed at us, it wasn't unusual to be screamed at two to three times a day, or more. Some days, every customer we spoke to screamed at us. The work pace was ridiculously intense. There were no breaks and managers were recording bathroom break times and handing out write-ups for going to them too much and if we insisted it was needed they'd demand we sign a full HIPA or release so they could access our medical record and judge for themselves if we needed the bathroom that much, and yes, this specific action was directly okayed by HR. People quit left and right. I quit and moved. The department manager got fired, and eventually all but the most crony-like idiots who were shit at the job were left. I can't imagine what happened after that because everyone I knew who worked there quit, or I stopped talking too. 
I've no idea how that epic fuck up ended. But I can say that there were huge consequences for the company if they did crash and burn hard. I don't know if it was the executive management denying money to hire more staff, or if our director just thought he could look good by making people work three times as hard for the same pay. But there was no way that department wasn't gonna eventually implode spectacularly. And it was entirely management's fault. Working at Mac Dix as a teen, I saw someone drop a piece of jewelry into the fry oil. And try to grab it as it dropped and sank their hand and half their forearm in 450 degree oil. They ran out screaming and we never saw them again. Working at a tire shop, I saw someone use an old bottle jack to lift a semi, and then as they began taking the tires off, the jack failed and the whole trailer sank down onto their legs, pinning them under the tire. It's important to note how you take tires off a semi truck, you lift it a couple inches, and sit on the ground with your legs around the bottom of the tire, and use your legs to lift it while you pull it off. Crazily enough though, the guy wasn't hurt too bad for one big reason. He was a enormous guy. We called him Big Joe because he was 7 foot 2 inches, and wasn't just tall, but proportionally bigger in every way. It was like someone clicked the drag and expand box on him. Any normal sized person would have had their legs crushed, but he just had some nasty bruises. Another story from tires, one of my former managers got killed by an exploding industrial tire. There have locking rings that hold the tire on the rim, but if they aren't set on just right, they will blow off when you wear the tire up, often with enough force to go right through you, and then still keep going with enough force to embed itself in steel or concrete, which is what happened to him. I didn't see this, just heard of it later on.